To get a blood sample, you have to poke yourself. Getting a blood sample is painful. Right now, the advice for diabetics is to measure their blood sugar frequently, like they say six times a day, I think is the standard. So if there's a way to use tears instead of blood, then the idea is they could just touch the sensor to their eye and like it would be a lot less painful and would hopefully be easier for them to do. So then diabetics would be able to measure their blood sugar more often and like, keep it within normal ranges. We're making the fluidic that we actually use to capture the tear fluid and transfer that to the electrochemical sensing chamber um, on the strip electrode. And Erica is putting the material into the mold and we wait for that to melt. And what we want to do now is to sort of mold the two pieces, glue the two pieces of plastic together um, so that they stick in the final device. When I started this as a sophomore, Daniel Bishop and Dr. LaBelle had already done a lot of work on developing a, a tear capturing device um, that, that works on a benchtop level and that's reproducible. And they got really great data with that. Um, but what we found is that, you know, it's, it's kind of tough to get that same reproducible testing from sensor to sensor to sensor. And, and also, how do you apply that and how do you get reproducible results on an actual living eye? I'm Erica Ingleshaw and I'm a junior in biomedical engineering. And on this project, I make the devices and put them together, assemble them, and during the semester I'll be looking at all of the different enzymes for glucose and seeing which one works the best for our device. We're opening up the mold and it's cool enough now that we can touch it. We'll see how the part turned out. My own study addresses the sterilization aspect of the project because the sooner we can get this device out on the market, the better. And if we get this out of the way, then you know the quicker it'll happen. So currently, I'm looking at several methods of sterilization. Uh, there's wet heat, there's dry heat, there's ultraviolet germicidal irradiation, there's autoclaving, there's a bunch of things. So we have to just test the effects on the actual device and see if it still works and if we get you know, accurate readings because of it, because it can make it all funky, especially since you have an enzyme in there and enzymes are delicate. When it comes to capturing tear fluid and testing it, um, there's a lot of little steps that have to go right in order to reach that goal. Um, one of them is just how do you get the fluid off of the surface of your eye and how do you get the correct amount of fluid each time and we found some really promising materials that are capable of doing that and at the same time being biocompatible and being safe to, to the human eye. It's a challenge, but it, it's fun.